official, we have a roller. All right, so what we have here is a dream build. This is my Super 73 RX. Super 73 has paved the way for electric bicycles. They have introduced us to a unique design that has quickly grown in popularity. Now in today's Super 73s, you might be surprised to find that they are only hitting 20 miles an hour. 20 miles an hour doesn't cut it for me. It does not make me feel safe when I am riding. So there are quite a few ways to get around that. And today, we'll be going over one of those ways. That's right, we will be building ourselves an upgraded Super 73 that's gonna hit speeds of 50 to 60 miles an hour. It's gonna have a lot of torque and it's gonna make me feel a lot safer when I'm out there riding. So what is up guys and girls? I am Mr. E from NYC and if you are new to the channel, I wanna welcome you. Today is day one that we will be upgrading our dream build. Day one, we will be installing the motor. The wheels that I chose for this build, they are Chris Customs wheels, and they were painted by our friends over at Arcane Moto. The motor that we're going with is a five kilowatt motor from Powerful Lithium, and I'll be going over the steps that you'll have to do to prep your motor for these type of wheels. So when this build started, I took the bike entirely apart and I tried to separate all of the components into bags with labels on them with the hopes that I wouldn't lose a single screw. To date, I'm missing spacers, I'm missing the kickstand, and I'm missing the bottom bracket. So if you decide to put on a build, something like this, make sure you do a better job of keeping yourself organized. De depending on the motor that you get, you're gonna find that you may need to bore out the hole that we're gonna tap. If you don't have a tapping tool or a tapping and die set tool like this one, you might just order the, the specific tap. Uh, this is a five millimeter tap, and when you order these alone, they come with a 4.2 millimeter drill bit, and that is so that you can bore open the hole here before you tap it. This is a tap and die set. What you're gonna want is a five millimeter tapping tool. So we're gonna tap every other hole. In this particular motor, you can see that we do not need to bore the opening. So all we're gonna do is uh, just tap it in. This is the finished product. This is what it's gonna look like once it's done. So these are the plates that we're gonna to use to sandwich the motor onto the rim. These are the screws we're gonna be using. We have some Loctite applied. All right, so we are lining up the threads. I'm using a light here to make sure that I'm on point. And then we screw it on. All right, next up, we uh, flipping the motor over. Uh, we're gonna take the wheel, we're gonna sandwich it on to the to this side of the motor, but before we do that, just to catch these threads and lock them, we're gonna use some Loctite in here. The uh, wheel is mounted, the ring is mounted, now we just have to tighten these bad boys up. All right, this is the dropout. As you can see, this one fits nicely, but this is small, smaller than the axle. So this part over here needs to be bored out. We're gonna do that now. This is a drill with a carving bit. And over here, this is the dropout. It's been bored. All right, so after the dropout has been milled, we will be installing our rotor. All right, I wanna show you these little, little, little tiny Allens. This is what comes with the uh, Magura rotors. Uh, we're not gonna be using that because of this over here. These are rotor spacers. You can pick these up on Amazon. Uh, this, I believe, is four millimeters. And I just wanted to show you what's inside there, right there. I'm using about four of these. See that screw right there? That screw can be your worst enemy. Depending on how you route this wire, this over here, this is your motor wire, your whole sensor wires. But when this rotor, hold on. Focus. But when this rotor spins, those pan head screws can dig into the insulation over here, severing the wires. So that is the reason why we are using these spacers so that this wire can travel up through a U-shaped opening 
that you'll see inside the motor's axle. The wire now sits inside the dropout. It is protected by that screw that you'll see over here. And this screw tightens your dropout onto the wheel's axle. All right, so now we're back inside. <clears throat> now that the tire, the rim, the mounting plate, rotor, dropouts are all assembled. We can put it onto the bike. I didn't record this. I kind of regret not showing you guys because it was really, really easy to get this on, but I needed an extra set of hands or you're gonna have to find a way to clamp this bike down so it doesn't move. And then again, you wanna be on the correct height and angle because all this does here is slide right in. After it slides in, use your existing Allens to hold the wheel onto the frame and you're good to go. So next up is the front wheel. We're gonna put that on now. All right, if you guys remember, my first dream build had Chris Customs wheels. The original hub was pretty similar to this, whereas you can get your, uh, your bearing and you can just slide them right in and out. They're not pressured in. So I will be reaching out to Chris Customs to try and get myself a replacement hub. But in the meantime, we will be installing this wheel. This is a red tacky lithium grease. This we're gonna use to lubricate this entire area. Insert the bearing, flip it around, do the other side. Now the axle will get lubed as well. Here's a quick look of the other side. Now we're ready to mount the wheel. Uh, forgot about this. This is very important. Without this, we cannot install the wheel. This is my Magura, the 220 millimeter rotor. And unlike the rear wheel, we're going to install this without a spacer because until I install the caliper, I'm not gonna know whether or not I need a spacer. These are not Allens, they are Torx. Torx have been tightened. She is ready to be mounted. So day one has been completed. We have a roller now. We are that much closer to getting this bad boy out there on the road. So next up, we'll be doing the brakes. We'll be mounting the calipers, mounting the levers, and possibly mounting the controller and beginning that wiring process. That's a video that you're not gonna wanna miss. We're using a far driver controller. A lot of people have questions about far drivers and I'm hoping that we can tackle that together. So at the end of that video, you and I will both have a better understanding of how far drivers work. All right, so I'm out of time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't hesitate. Smash that like button. Leave a comment because I get back to everybody. And if you want to, please subscribe. So until the next video, peace out everybody.